Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you an alternate way to power 6 volt, 12 volt, or 24 volt incandescent lamps, including halogens, using a 120 volt or 240 volt AC line without the use of a transformer or switch mode power supply. The purpose of this video is to show it can be done if needed. As usual, when working with 120 volts or 240 volts AC, safety is of utmost importance. The method I'm going to show you only requires one component to make these bulbs operate at full brightness. I'm also going to show you two extra components that you can add in to increase the safety of the circuit. Now in order to power this 12 volt 27 watt lamp at full brightness without burning out the filament using 120 volts, you're going to have to limit the current. There's two ways to do that. One is by using a resistor and we are not going to be using a resistor because the resistor will generate way too much heat. Instead, we're going to be using capacitors. Many different types. I'm going to show you a whole bunch right now. Over here, this was extracted from a ceiling fan control. Inside there are three 4 microfarad 250 volt rated capacitors. This one over here is a 400 volt AC capacitor and it's rated 28 microfarads. These over here rated 10 microfarads each, 250. This one's three, I think that one's three. And these poly capacitors are 3.3 microfarads at 400. There's also an oil filled one which you're going to see in a minute. Now, if you're going to be taking a 120 volt AC line and dropping the voltage down, the most important thing is that the rating of the capacitor is much higher than the peak voltage for the AC line. So for a 120 volt AC line, you're looking at a peak voltage of right around 170 volts. So whatever capacitor you use, it has to be rated at least 200 volts or higher. If you're going to be taking a 240 volt supply and dropping it down to power a 12 volt or 24 volt lamp, then you want to make sure you use between a 400 volt and a 600 volt rated capacitor. To figure out the value of the capacitor is very simple. Let me show you how. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be powering the 27 watt bulb. So 27 watts divided by 12 volts equals 2.25 amps. Now I'm going to measure my AC line, the voltage, and it's 123. I'm going to divide that by 2.25 amps, and that's going to give me 54.66 ohms. So if I was going to be using a resistor, this is the value, but we're not going to be using a resistor. We're going to be using a capacitor. So using a capacitor to act just like a resistor is called capacitive reactance. I'm going to be placing a link in the video description area to make it very easy for you to figure this out. I'm going to go over here now. Hertz. In America, we use 60 Hertz. You may use 50. Keep in mind, if you have a 100 microfarad capacitor at 60 Hertz, it's going to give you more current flowing through than if you had a lower frequency, such as 50 Hertz. So right here, 100 60 is going to give me 26 ohms. Now if I go over here and it changes to 50, you're going to see that it's going to increase this value here. See, so it went from 26 to 31. Let's put this back to mine. 60. Calculate. We need 54 to 55. So let's try cutting this in half to 50 microfarad. 53, so we're going to need probably around 48 microfarad. All right, that's close enough. 48 microfarads in order to power the lamp at full brightness. Now that we have this information, let's set it up and give it a try. Now to demonstrate, I'll be using this dual run capacitor. It's oil filled. I pulled this out of an old AC system. It still works. The values drop just a little bit because as they age, they typically go lower three terminals because there's a common, one for the compressor, common, and one for the fan. Over here is a poly capacitor. I had it laying around. It's a 3.7 microfarad, and I believe the voltage is 250 volts, so we're well above the 170. Over here, this one's rated 440. We're going to measure the capacitance, so first I'm going to short out the two terminals. just to ensure there's no charge. 
So just under 41. And let's measure the capacitance for this one right over here. 3.8. So the total value is going to be just under 45. It's a little lower than I wanted, but I can always add more capacitance to increase the voltage level at the bulb. Now let's get everything connected up. Right here is the AC line, 120 volts. This jumper wire that goes to the bulb is connected to the neutral of the AC line, which is the white wire. Right over here, the hot wire goes into a fuse. Now the circuit's going to be pulling around 2.2 amps, so you want to make sure the fuse is rated about 50% higher. So this one here is rated, I believe, 3.5 amps. The other side of the bulb goes to one terminal of the capacitor. This side of the fuse here goes to the other terminal. In order to increase the capacitance, I had to take this capacitor here and using these jumper wires, connect it in parallel with this capacitor. So one of the wires from there goes to one terminal and the other wire goes to the other. For safety purposes, when power is disconnected from the circuit, you want to make sure that the capacitor bleeds down within about 30 seconds. Some of these capacitors have an internal resistor rated 10M or 10 megaohm. Over here I'm going to be using a 1 megaohm half watt resistor and it's placed right across the terminals so when the power is disconnected this will bleed the voltage off and eliminate any chance of shock if you accidentally touch the terminals. Let's plug it in now. Came on very nice, very bright. Now we're going to measure the voltage at the bulb. All right, let's plug it back in again. This is AC volts. Keep an eye over here. You have to reach around very carefully. And we'll see what the voltage is. So 11.88, that's very close to the 12 volts. Let me increase the capacitance to get the voltage a little bit higher. As I said earlier, this is a dual capacitor, so the fan side is right around 5 microfarads, so it's going to be just over 1 microfarad higher than using the small capacitor. This side here is common. We're going to take this side here, which is compressor, connect it to this side. So now we're going to be paralleling both of those capacitors into one, and the value should now be around 46 microfarads. The voltage should be well above 12. Let's plug it in. Okay, it does look brighter. Let's measure. 12.5 volts. So at 46 microfarads, which is very close to the value I came up with using the calculator, it's powering this bulb just fine. If you wanted to make it brighter to run at 14 volts, add another microfarad or two. And if this was a 50 watt bulb instead of a 27 watt bulb, what you would do is double the capacitance that you see right here. So instead of having 46, you'd be using right around 90 to power a 50 watt halogen, such as the type that's used for a car headlight. Just to show you how this resistor bleeds off the charge when power is disconnected, I'm going to plug this back in. All right, you can see line voltage is at 121. Now when I disconnect this, I'm going to switch this to DC. You can see it's bleeding off that charge. And it does it fairly quickly for the amount of capacitance that I'm using. When it gets below 50, it's pretty safe to touch. It takes about 20 to 30 seconds to get it down low enough. You saw how easy it was to connect this up using the calculator to figure out the correct value. So if you ever have an instance where you do not have a transformer or you do not have a switch mode power supply and you'd like to power up any kind of a light bulb, 6 volt, 12, 24, all the way up to 100 watts. You're not going to have any problem doing it using a capacitor. And the good thing is, capacitors are found pretty much everywhere around your house, your washing machine, your AC system, refrigerator, ceiling fans, and much more. Very easy to find.
Thanks for watching.